Well, um, Julie the and Quinta. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Oh. Uh, I rise to speak on this part one of the bill, particularly right now on Clause 9, which amends Section 10 of the Principal Act uh, to allow the government to borrow to, for the National Land Transport Fund. And I'd like to talk about my concerns with allowing the government to borrow to pay for projects in the National Land Transport Fund. Firstly, at the moment, the government has a very unbalanced transport spend. So over $1 billion a year are being spent on new state highways. That's over a third of the total transport budget. Um, and very small amounts of money are being allocated to all the other areas that we need to attend to as part of our transport network. That includes the maintenance of our existing local roads, the maintenance and renewals of our existing state highways. Uh, there's a tiny, tiny proportion of money going into walking and cycling. If you look at the National Land Transport Plan for the next three years, um, there's actually almost no money being put into new public transport infrastructure. So at the moment, we have a government that doesn't understand that the transport system is a network. And the best way to get a good outcome from a network is to make sure that it's balanced. So the best way to free up our existing roads for those who need to drive is to allow a small number of people to be able to walk and cycle safely, like children walking and cycling safely to school so their parents don't have to congest the roads at peak time because they have to drop them off, and allowing a small number of people in our congested urban areas to switch to public transport. So so not everybody needs to use public transport or walk or cycle to benefit from the investment in having that alternative. Now, unfortunately, there's no evidence anywhere in the world that expanding road capacity or building new roads will improve economic productivity or reduce congestion. In fact, there was a letter written to the Secretary of Transportation in the UK uh, just a few months ago by 32 leading transport professionals and academics, people who've worked in this industry for 40 years, saying, actually, we are concerned that our current methods of planning for transport infrastructure and evaluating the economic impacts don't take into account the reality that's been observed everywhere that building new interurban roads worsens congestion and does nothing to improve economic productivity. So essentially, by allowing this government to borrow to pay for its unbalanced backwards transport priorities, What's going to happen is future New Zealanders and future governments will have less money available to spend on the transport projects we actually need. And that's because none of the projects they are uh, proposing and are going to spend billions of dollars on will actually generate new revenue. So while in theory it may uh, make sense, for example, to borrow to pay for some of Auckland's transport infrastructure because we're expecting huge growth in Auckland and therefore there will be future ratepayers and taxpayers who will benefit from that infrastructure investment and we need to plan ahead of that growth. What the government is planning to do is to borrow to pay for Transmission Gully. Um, and they're going to borrow through the private sector, through a private-public partnership, which actually is essentially just taking out a loan from the private sector. So instead of paying 4%, which the government could realistically borrow at 4%, they'll be paying 12 to 14% or 10 to 12% so that the private investors have a guaranteed return for the 25 years of the life of the project. What the National Party is doing is spending future taxpayers' money now. They want to expand the amount of money available to them to throw away at senseless transport projects that make that will not benefit the economy, unfortunately. Um, and yet, future taxpayers will have to pay these back with interest, with excessive interest in the case of the public-private partnerships. Um, and they will not have the money available to maintain our existing road network. They will not have the money available to invest in the very vital alternatives that people in urban areas are crying out for. Everywhere we have invested in 
uh, congestion-free public transport alternatives, it's been wildly successful. We can see that with the Northern Busway. We can see that with the investments that have made, been made in the Auckland Rail Network so far. We've had huge growth in both of those areas, much higher than what was modelled. And that has led to declining traffic volumes on state highways, which means there's less problems with congestion. Mr Chair, Mr Honourable Chair, Mr Kevin Chair. Mallard. Uh, I, I note um, that no National Party member um, contested the call with me. I note that no National Party member is prepared to defend Jerry Brownlee. I note that no member with any responsibility for the transport uh, area has bothered to uh, sit in a chair or to uh, defend this bill. And that's probably because uh, it is more or less indefensible. Uh, and